In this video, we're going to take a look at the fourth JWT lab from Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called JWT Authentication Bypass via JWK Header Injection. In the first video, we went through an introduction into JWT attacks and covered the background information that's available on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy, as well as some of the tools that we can use to work with JWTs like JWT.io and CyberChef, Python libraries, Burp Suite extensions, and the JWT tool. So we're not going to go through that stuff again, but we will go through the background information that's specific to this lab. According to JWS specification, only the ALG header parameter is mandatory. In practice, however, JWT headers, also known as Joe's headers, often contain several other parameters. The following of particular interest to attackers. JWK, which is a JSON web key, provides an embedded JSON object representing the key. The JKU, which is a JSON web key set URL, provides a URL from which the service can fetch a set of keys containing the correct key. The KID is the key ID, and it provides an ID that servers can use to identify the correct key in cases where there are multiple keys to choose from. Depending on the format of the key, this may have a matching KID parameter. As you can see, these user controllable parameters each tell the recipient server which key to use when verifying the signature. In this section, we'll learn how to exploit these parameters to inject modified JWTs signed using your own arbitrary key rather than the server's secret. The JSON Web Signature specification describes an optional JWK header parameter which servers can use to embed their public key directly within the token itself in JWK format. A JWK or JSON Web Key is a standardized format for representing keys as a JSON object and we can see that in the example below where we have some of the parameters we've seen. The key ID, the type is JWT, the algorithm is RS256 and then we have the JWK K down here with some of the key details. And here we have the E and we have the N, so these are some of the actual values that are used for generating the key, as well as the algorithm here, which is RSA. There's a note here that if you're not familiar with public and private keys, then you can take a look at the symmetric versus asymmetric algorithm section. So let's do that. It says here that JWTs can be signed using a range of different algorithms. Some of them, such as HS256, which is HMAC and SHA256, use a symmetric key. This means that the server uses a single key to both sign and verify the token. Clearly, this needs to be kept secret, just like a password. Other algorithms, such as RS256, which is RSA and SHA256, use an asymmetric key pair. This consists of a private key, which the server uses to sign the token, and a mathematically related public key that can be used to verify the signature. So this is a very fundamental concept in cryptography, that you have symmetric algorithms that have a single key to encrypt and decrypt data, and then you have asymmetric algorithms. So if you think of like PGP, where you have a private key and a public key, and if somebody wants to send a message to somebody else, let's say I want to send a message to somebody, in order for me to encrypt the data for them, I'll encrypt it using their public key, and then the only way it can be decrypted is with the private key. So everybody has access to that person's public key, or whoever they share it with anyway but they're the only person that has the private key to decrypt the data. And that has two functions, because now if they want to send a message out to the public, let's say go and post it on a forum or something like that, they can post a message there and they can sign it with their private key. And then people can verify that message with the public key to verify the authenticity. Ideally, servers should use a limited whitelist of public keys to verify JWT signatures. However, misconfigured servers sometimes use any key that's embedded in the JWK parameter. You can exploit this behavior by signing a modified JWT using your own RSA private key and then embedding the matching public key in the JWK header. Although you can manually add or modify the JWK parameter in Burp, the JWT editor extension provides a useful feature to help you test for this vulnerability. And then we have some instructions on how to do that, which I'm not going to go through because we're going to demonstrate that anyway. And it also says that you can perform this attack manually by adding the JWK header yourself. However, you may need to update the JWT's KID parameter to match the KID of the embedded key. The extension's built-in attack takes care of this step for you. All right, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the lab. The description says, this lab uses a JWT-based mechanism for handling sessions. The server supports the JWK parameter in the JWT header, and this is sometimes used to embed the correct verification key directly in the token. However, it fails to check whether the provided key came from a trusted source. To solve the lab, we can modify and sign a JWT that gives us access to the admin panel and then delete the user car loss. So let's go and access the lab. We need to go and log in with these credentials that we've been given first of all, Wiener and Peter. 
Okay, so we'll go to my account, we'll log in, and we can hit F12 to bring up our developer tools, go and have a look at our session cookie, which has this JWT in it. And we can paste that into JWT.io to get some of the information. Again, not too much different to what we usually see here. We've got KID, we've got a different algorithm, so it's normally HS256, and this is RS256, so RSA. And then, as usual, we need to modify this username from Wiener to administrator so that we can go and delete the Carlos user. Obviously, if we do that, the problem is the signature isn't going to match, which is why we need to have a look at this JWK parameter. So let's go over to our demo script. As usual, we'll solve this with Python first of all, and we need to generate a private key. So I've just got a command here. I just grabbed this from ChatGPT and it will give us a private key. Of course, you could just use something like TLDR and get some example commands or just use the help menu if TLDR isn't giving you great options. Oh, this gives you subcommands. Okay, so you can do OpenSSL help. Yeah, you can look through the manual, you can use Google, you can use ChatGPT, whatever works for you. And that will generate us the private key and then we just need to get the public key from that as well. So again, I'll just paste in this command, OpenSSL RSA, we're taking in the private key and then we're generating the public key from that. And then you can have a look and just make sure everything looks okay with those two, which it does. So I'm gonna open up the demo script. So the first thing we need to do is get this JWT. I'm gonna go and take a copy of it from JWT.io, paste it in here. The second part is verifying the JWT signature. It's not actually doing that, that's just a old comment that I've got in there. All it's doing is loading the public key that we created and reading it. And then it's gonna decode the JWT that we've provided up here. It's gonna print out the decoded token and also the header. And then it's gonna modify the token. So we're gonna change the payload value so this is the claim, it's sub, and we're changing the value of that claim to administrator. We'll print it out, and then we'll load the private key. This is what we're gonna sign it with. And we need to grab these public key numbers. You just need to make sure this matches what we saw in the example. So it took me a little bit of time to get this demo working. You basically need it to match this. And by default, some of the examples that you come across in Python won't do that. So that's what it does, and then it's going to generate this JWK, JWK, and then we're going to rebuild the token. So we're going to encode the modified token with the private key. That's what we're signing it with. The algorithm is RS256, and then we need to put in this header, the JWK that we create. So that has the public key. So it's signed with the private key, and inside the JWT is the public key in the JWK. So that's basically how this is going to work. It's going to read the header and see this JWK, it's going to take that public key and then it's going to look and see does that match the private key it's been signed with and basically say, okay, those two match, there doesn't seem to be a problem here, but obviously it's trusting our user supplied keys, which isn't a good thing. Apart from that, it adds the KID as well. So we're just adding the original KID from our token and that's it. It's just going to print out the modified token and the header. So I'm going to hit save and then let's do Python demo. All right, and there you go. So there's our original token. We've got our header, and then we change the token. So we're just changing the sub to administrator. We modify the header. So we're adding this new JWK, and then we print out the final token once it's been signed and re-encoded. And if we go back then to our cookies and then replace that, hit F5 to refresh, and now with the administrator. So that was nice and easy. We've done it with the Python script. However, we want to try and solve this with Burp Suite now. So let me go, I was going to say let me log out here, but actually it's fine. What we'll do is we'll just grab the my account from when we were Wiener, which is right here. So I'm going to take this request and send it to the repeater. Let me maximize this as well. So I'm not sure if you saw the last video, but in the last one, we were able to use this JSON Web Tokens extension, but the JSON Web Token extension didn't work. So there's two different ones here. And in this one, we're actually going to see the reverse. So if we look at the JSON web tokens, which did work for the previous one, there's actually no option here. We've got the non attacks and we can load a secret and a key from a file, but there's nothing to actually spoof the JWK. Whereas if we go to this JSON web token and go down to attack, you'll see embedded JWK is one of the attacks. So that's great. If we now change this username to administrator, can we click an attack and then embedded JWK? But we can't because we don't have any signing keys. 
So last time, you might remember, I couldn't get the attack working with this extension because I couldn't find the right way to add a secret here. It was by brute force in the secret that we got the last challenge. This time we can go to new RSA, we can just generate a key and that should be it. Let's just go back to repeater and attack and then embedded JWK, okay, send. We scroll down and we're the administrator again. So really nice, quick and easy one. I really liked how that extension dealt with this attack. The final thing we wanna look at is the JWT tool. So I'm gonna take the token that we had originally and let's go and run that. So we can do JWT tool, paste in the token, it'll decode it for us. And then we can do dash H if we wanna bring up the options here. Had some issues trying to get this to work. You can see we've got this, we can provide a URL to a JWK, but Burp Suite or Port Swiggers Web Security Academy won't reach out to any external URLs anyway, so you need Burp Collaborator if you do anything that needs to reach out. What else do we have? We have this exploit, so dash X, and then we have inject inline. So that was the other option. These didn't work for me. Let me show you what happened whenever I tried to do this. So if we do exploit and then I for inline, we haven't actually changed anything here. So let me take a copy of that. Let me just decode that. And notice that it has added the JWK, but we've still got the same details here, obviously, and it doesn't quite look the same as the Python version that we did. Let me minimize that and add the tamper option. So tamper and then zero, and then we change the username to administrator, zero. Let's try that one. That one has administrator. So if we go back to our lab, not that one, go back here, F12, replace the cookie and refresh. We're not logged in anymore. So that didn't actually work. And I found that the reason was the KID. So the KID that's inside the JWK isn't matching the KID here. So there's a couple of things you could do. You could do it again and try and say, we'll change the KID to JWT tool. And then we'll change the sub to administrator. And hopefully that'll work. Paste that in, refresh, and we are the administrator. So that worked. Another way we could do it, this is the way that I did it previously. Oh, actually we wanna keep that in. So we want to inject claim, and then the payload claim is sub. The payload value was administrator. The header claim was KID, and the header value was JWT tool and then dash X and I for the inline. Take a copy of this. It should just be the same token. Paste it in here, just to see how it looks like. Looks all good, JWT tools, so that's all matching now. And if we go back then, just make sure this one also works okay. Refresh the page, we're still the admin, it means we can go to the admin panel and we can delete Carlos. And there we go, we've solved the lab. So in terms of remediation, as we saw in the background information to begin with, servers should really have a limited whitelist of public keys that they use to verify JWC signatures. Don't just take it from the user and assume that it's safe. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you are interested in finding some vulnerabilities with JWTs, I'll encourage you again to go and sign up to the Integrity platform, check out some of the bug bounty programs, where a lot of the stuff that you'll learn on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy will be found on real life programs and earn you some money in the process. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.